Thank you very much. Um, so hello, today I'm going to talk about how music influences us and our brains. So behind me, we have a few very, very known people. They're very, very famous, and I bet most of you have heard of them, some of them, or at least seen them, or heard anything composed by them. So can I see some hands? Who of you thinks that he's seen a single one of these people, maybe in the papers, or has heard of them? Please keep them up. Um, so, who of you think that one of these people has influenced your life in one way or another? Well, I was going to say most of you kept your hands up, but all of you did. So, well, this is one way in which artists can really influence us. And like you must have guessed, these are all musicians. Um, but now the real question comes up. Do they really influence us? Well, research in the Durham University and the University of Jyväskylä in Finland, I doubt I said that correctly, found that sad music, even sad music, makes us happy in one way or another. So that means that it doesn't matter what you listen to. It doesn't matter if it's rap, hip hop, um, classical music, Scottish bagpipe music. It's going to make you happy in one way or another. Furthermore, the Journal of Positive Psychology found that listening to upbeat music for two weeks straight can increase your overall mood. But now, let's talk a bit more about me personally. Well, my taste of music has changed completely since I was born, obviously, like all of us have. Well, it started off with baby songs, which I bet all of us have started off with. Then it changed to trying to learn my ABCs. Then it changed to an unhealthy obsession with Justin Timberlake, where I'm just not going to go to right now. And in 2017, well, I listened to basically everything apart from death metal. Um, furthermore, well, not really furthermore, but what does that mean that I listen to basically everything now? Does it make any difference? Does that mean that some people will actually still want to talk to me because I listen to hip-hop, because I listen to classical music at some point. Does that mean that my friends will stop wanting to be my friends because of my taste of music? Well, no, we're in the 21st century, so no. Um, furthermore, even known people around the world, well, just because of their taste of music, nobody's actually going to comment, comment about it. So, obviously, um, music can also have a big impact on you personally and your lifestyle and like with these people. And obviously, I have nothing against people who believe that music should influence your lifestyle in one way or another. But this is the thing. Music doesn't only influence us on a person's person basis. Music also influences history. So let's talk about the cultural impact through history. Well, Nothing is really stopping music from expanding, from being spread by the artists like Dr. Dre, Eminem, um, Beyonce, naming the more known controversial artists. Like, for example, the church in the past, well, they stopped that type of controversial music from spreading. Well, it also influences, well, the morality. So here are some of the more controversial artists of our time. Well, what can we really say about this? Well, the morality of music has changed drastically. Rap and hip-hop has become prominent, and the glorification of sex, and drug, sex, drug abuse, and violence has become drastically more prominent in the past few years. But overall, researchers deny that it influences us in the way that we act. However, they do agree that this type of music does promote these actions. Now that the history is clear, we can talk about the influence of music. But before we do this, we must go into detail about how much we actually listen to music. So the average Brit listens to two and a half hours of music per day. That means going home, listening to music, driving an Uber, listening to music, using the tube, listening to music, even working on a project for maths, for example, 
you're going to be listening to music. That means, using the statistics above, that the average Brit listens to eight years of music in his lifetime. Furthermore, the average Brit will listen to 22% of music. I mean, one to two hours of music for 22% of the people questioned. Two to three hours of music is what 18% of the Christian people listen to. Three to four for 17. 10% for, uh, for four to five hours. And 22% for five hours a day. So, some research proved that the experiences with any type of music can make us happy, like I said before. And, well, this research was done by Thomas Arola. Furthermore, there's a very big misconception with where our taste of music comes from. We always say that we're born with a specific taste of music, that what we listen to is something that we feel in our hearts. Well, that's just not true. The real science behind it basically states, in, a short, in the shortest way um, possible, that exposure to the type of music is what determines what we listen to. That means if you go to a death metal fan and force him, well, not, maybe not force him, but politely ask him to listen to classical music for, let's just say, one hour a day, with time, he's going to start to actually like this type of music. Obviously, there's going to be so there's going to have to be some kind of change in the song or anything like that. But it has been proven before that the exposure to the music is what actually determines our taste. Furthermore, well, in our youth, in our teenage years, peer pressure can also, in a way, influence the music that we listen to. However, the exposure is what really determines it. Furthermore, the Auditory Cognitive Neuroscience Laboratory at McGill University found that it doesn't matter what type of music one listens to. Dopamine is still being released. Well, a lot of you might have heard of dopamine. It's a chemical that's re released in your brain when you eat, for example, good food, while having sex, or even drug abuse. But I bet most of you have had this one moment, that one moment when you continually listen to a song, you have it on and repeat. For example, let's say you're in Italy, you're in the nicest hotel you've ever been to, and you listen to the song on repeat, on repeat. When you leave Italy, you kind of get bored of it. You don't really listen to it anymore. But after, let's just say, half a year, you hear it. The faintest sound, you hear it in the radio of that song, and it reminds you. Everything starts flushing back. The sun, the beautiful palm trees, everything. The sand on the beach. But now, how does that work? Well, it's actually a pretty hard uh, question to answer. I researched this for pretty long. Uh, so, what happens is that we use our senses to record data. We use our eyes to remember pictures, like, you might remember this picture of a brain. We use our hands, for example, to feel, to feel the ripples along this wall, for example. And we use our ears to listen. Well, that's all stored in our brain. Well, where exactly? It's stored in the temporal lobe, right over there. Well, the temporal lobe is not only responsible for this. It's also responsible for the anticipatory factors of music. What happens is you listen to a song, you listen to drum and bass, for example, which is um, what teenagers my age listen to right now. Um, what happens is there are drops or climaxes in any other type of music. And what happens is this part of the brain, the temporal lobe, is stimulated. and it is such an anticipation that really creates our love for music. But now, what does music really do? Is it bad? Is it good? Does it really make any difference? 
Well, the science behind it is clear. It has the ability to put us into any type of mood. It has the ability to make us sad, to remember things, to remember the beauty of something. And it has the ability to create anger, to pressure us into something. But now, how does music influence you personally, you ask? Well, that answer, only yourself can answer. Thank you very much.